Hello and welcome to another Marinal video. In this video I'm going to attempt to repair this Amiga 500. I got this machine some time ago and every time I power it up it <laughs> gives you a white screen as you can see here. It's nothing to do with the exposure, it's just, yeah, it doesn't work. So I'm going to open it up and have a look inside and see what can be done. This will be the first part. Alright, here we go. Here's the machine. I'm going to turn her over and we're going to get to these screws. And fast forward. I don't know why the case is bowed like it has in the front. I'm not really too sure what's going on with this machine. Alright, all the screws are out. And we can now take off the top. And here we go, just like that. As you can see inside, it's pretty clean doesn't seem to be any marks or anything on the boards so I move the keyboard away from it and pull the keyboard connector out Dink. Yeah. as you can see the shields nice and clean all right we need to get the screws out of this and flip up some little tabs so here we go for some reason they're flathead screws I have no idea why anyway get all these out Flip these little tabs over and you can just pull it off. There we go. Off it comes. And there we go. We can now see the A500's motherboard. It's actually really clean. We will have a more in depth look at this in the middle of the two. Yeah, as you can see, clean. So we're just going to press down these chips. Here's the CPU. Floppy disk drive is actually screwed into this one. <laughs> I've had a few which aren't. But these chips didn't seem to be that loose, so I didn't see that causing a problem. Alright, here we go. So here we have the Motorola 68000 clocked at 7 MHz. Here's the ROM. Fat Agnes. The DMA controller. Paula. The sound. You can also see. Gary over here and Denise in the top right, uh, top left, sorry. Uh, she does video, she does a good job. And you can see the four RAM chips down below for 512 kilobits of RAM. Alright, I'm going to try and take the motherboard out so we can uh, further have a good look at it without doing any damage to the case because knowing me, I probably will damage it. Uh, here we go, there's a little tab at the front, pull it out and boom! She's out of her cage. The rock lobster is out. Alright, so we're just going to pull the chips up a bit and then put them back down. Sometimes contacts do just go bad. It has none, been known to happen quite a few times. I've had it with quite a few computers. So the old thing of banging a computer, sometimes an older one will make it work for a bit just because a chip that is socketed has become loose. So just push them in and we'll see if that makes any difference. Alright, got the keyboard all hooked up. Let's turn her on. Well, yeah, that's different. I don't know why it's doing that, but I have a feeling the graphics chip may have an issue. Old Denise may have given up. So I'm going to get a new Denise soon. And that will be for part two. Well, that's the end of part one. Thanks for watching. So in the second part, I am going to have another board. And I'm going to do some chip swapping and see if we can get something more than some garbled lines out of it. I would really like to have this machine working just because it was my first computer. And uh, it holds a lot of memories for me. I'm quite a nostalgic person. So, if I can't give this board the work, I will just find myself a working board and put it in this case because this case is in really good condition. I will retro bright the keys. But uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. Part 2 will be in a couple of days. Thank you guys. Ah, oh, crap, it wasn't recording.